welcome, 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 welcome. This is the Beyond Take Two podcast brought to you by Beyond Hollywood International Film Festival. I'm your host, Madge. And I'm your host, Veronica. And today we have a special, special, special guest in the building. This man is Mm multi-talented. He is a director, a writer, producer, actor, you can see him in his new film, Dirty Cops, L.A. Yes. Doing his thing. You see the drip. You see the fit it. <laughs> my, my boy is doing it. My man, I am Joey, is in the building. Yay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, we've been, on, uh, we've been on schedule for a few weeks or months. Yeah, no, you, you've been ditching us. Nah, I was, I was on the verge. <laughs> he, I had to come back to life. He been skating. He been I had to skating. come back to life. I was like on my deathbed all after the movie. That's a whole Aww. story. Like, we can tell that. I almost died doing this movie. Really? Yeah, like if you look at the credits... Like, that's not cap. It says my name. Like, right, right. It, it started rolling. <laughs> so then, like, you know what I'm saying? So then people, I was in the theater, and people, like, laughed and clapped when they saw that. And I'm in the corner dying, and I'm like, yeah, clap. But yeah. I need more than a clap, because to do that, you're, you're going to almost kill yourself. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm sitting in the theater. I'm I'm on the deathbed. I shouldn't even been there. I shouldn't even been at my own premiere. I was dying. Really? Yeah, I, was, I, I died. I died. So I have it on. You guys are gonna see it in the um, in my documentary, right? But I have the whole thing kind of like documented, yeah, for, for the whole time. So when you see the credits and I had to do it, it was like I don't know, I had like a internal clock, like a biological clock, but yeah. for success kind of thing, right? right. So um, I cast it. It was 2019. I cast it. I had you know Sling Johnson and I had Delay. Shout out to them. Right. A few people that were in it. At the time, 2019, post-pandemic, pre-pandemic, mm-hmm. they were set to take off. Okay. So I'm like, wow, shit, they're going to do my movie? Right. So I was set for them to to pull the, oh, I'm not available. So I I just, I didn't know the pandemic was coming, but I knew a fuck was in the car. Right. I knew a fuck was in the <laughs> Right, car. somewhere in there. Somewhere in Some the car. Like, this is too good to be true. So I'm like, okay, well, pff, let me think. Okay, boom, got it. I wrote the end. I, I shot the ending first because mm-hmm. it was the impossibilities of getting them in the same city at the same time. They're all working comedians and everything like right. that. Right. To get them in the same city, same time, on the same schedule was like I postponed the movie for like ninety days. I'm like, they like, why? Wow. Are we, why aren't we shooting? I'm like, because I can't afford to shoot if I don't have the ending. Right. 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 So it's not even a thing if I don't have them core exactly. characters in this ending. Smart. So November 2019, they all was like, "Yo, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here." I said. Joke on you! I'm gonna max y'all out this whole <laughs> this whole weekend. You're we're gonna, mine. Yeah, we're gonna shoot, right? <laughs> so, um, 2019, I got I got the ending, and I was like, boom! And you should if you watch the movie, it actually played better. The ending, yeah. We had no chemistry. We had no rehearsal. We had no anything. Yeah. So it plays better at the end because by the end, by the time you watch the movie, all of that fumbling and everything at the end was actually what I needed for them to not know, you know. Everything like that. So yeah. I mean, it worked out great. But nice. in the beginning, I was like, yo, this shit looks like we need rehearsal. This shit looks like it, the chemistry's not there yet. Right. right. Delay, shout out to my man Delay. <laughs> Go back and watch the movie or put a split screen up. <laughs> watch Delay when he comes into the house on the last last scene. Mm-hmm. He hasn't read the script. <laughs> he, ha- he doesn't know what the fuck is going on. He doesn't have a badge. What? He doesn't have anything. He's just he's just there. He keep and don't say nothing because I was hilarious. Just like, he just keeps doing that. And I'm like, yeah. Yo. And at first, I'm looking at the footage years ago, and I'm like, yo, this is, I don't know how this ending is going to play, but fuck it, it's my ending. Yeah. So then we do the whole movie. The pandemic pops up. That's the fuck. That That's joke, the fuck. Right? Mm-hmm. The fuck. We're on set um, March 12th, 2020. 2020? Yes. And I knew a fuck was approaching. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, because in March that's when it's yeah, it yeah. really hit. They, 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 they start they started yeah. shutting down the I'm, basketball games. Yeah, but and everything. I'm, yeah. I'm a psychic and I I call bullshit. So my family have been preparing since November. Yeah, I'm watching every. I got my Spidey sense. I got all my blogs, my little conspiracy, everything. Right? Yeah, so I'm like, no fuck is upon us. I took my son out of school. Or both my, all three, my two sons. I didn't, yeah, I had three. I did have three. But he was a baby. All right, so I took my two sons out yeah. of school in November. Okay, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm like. Caucasian in that respect. Right. They were out of school <laughs> then. They were been out of school. So they're not going to catch us with our pants right. down. Right. right. All the kids are coughing. And, out of school. 
I have a movie to do. It's not gonna happen to me, right? Right. So March 13th, we are I'm talking about I damn near had this movie. Well, I'm glad the pandemic happened. We'll get to there. I don't know what you guys have yeah. to talk about, but <laughs> this is about you, so I want to hear your I'm, story. Tell me how it happened. <laughs> not many people know how it happened, right? So 2019, March, March 13th, March 12th, 2020. Mm-hmm. The fuck is upon us. I'm watching it just happen, happen. Yeah. Happen, happen, happen. I'm like, as long as y'all don't fuck with me, I'm okay. <laughs> so we're on set. And my DP comes in and he says, yo, it's all over. It's over. We're, we're shut down. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, yeah, they shutting everything down. I'm like, yeah, I, I see it. It's on the news. He's yeah. like, no, no, no. We're shut down. They they shut down my job. There's corona on all of the equipment. I said, well, get that shit the fuck out of here. Why would you? Corona on all of it. Why would you? You just walked in with hands full of shit. Why would you bring the corona in here? He's like, right. <laughs> no, we sprayed this shit down. Yeah. Big picture. They shut down my job. We were not producing. Movies. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, are you fucking serious, bro? Wow. And then that uh, that's when it became real. Where were you guys shooting at? We were, were you guys shooting, on set? Yeah, Any... We were on set for Dirty Cops. Are you, were you guys like we in, in a studio or you guys? We were in uh, an Airbnb for, to, for this scene. Oh, okay. Oh. We were in an Airbnb for this scene. And um, he comes in and that's when he drops the bomb. So now we're all like, the fuck? So it's, yeah. now it's real. Yeah. On the news, Twitter, none of that right. was real. Now it's like, oh shit, okay. So I'm watching my investment fly out the window like, shit. Wow. And then- um, That's the worst feeling. It, a calm got on the set. Now everyone, can, I, feel, I remember he got close to me to pick up some equipment and I had never really felt anyone breathe on me like that. Right. I was like, yo, <laughs> you're too close, bro. Like- <laughs> That was close. Hold on. Six feet. Yeah, I like, now I get the whole six feet thing because that was absolutely too close. I should never feel you breathe like right, that. And it right. wasn't like a big breath. It was just, you're too close. Right. Yeah. So we did that and we shut down, but I'm in the house losing weight, losing my mind, going, this can't fucking be. Like, this was the fuck. I'm right. thinking they're going on tour. They're going to say, yo, I got offered a big movie. I can't fuck with you no more. Yeah. Right. And they shut down the world. And I'm how, like, how, how much of the movie was done at this point? I would say in, in my mind, 90%. Wow. Mm. But like I say, the pandemic was a gift and a curse because it gave me all that time to sit with the footage. I didn't do anything for 30 days besides mm. cry and mm-hmm. worry. Like, right, what the right. fuck is going on right. here? Right, right. And... Finally, my mom, everybody kept calling me like, yo, so what's up with the movie? They wanted me to drop it on like YouTube since everybody yeah. was in the house. And I like, I put it on Instagram like, yo, y'all think we should drop it? And right. everybody was like, yeah. One of my homegirls DM me was like, do you mean like you have something else to drop? Or like mm-hmm. you're going to chop up the movie? Right. right. I'm like, I'm chop up the movie. She's like, fuck them. Don't chop up the movie. Don't right. do it. Right. Yeah. YouTube. Like right. damn, out of all these thousands of people, one, 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 two. Is she, is she familiar with like how things she work in the industry? Me. She just knows me. Oh, okay. She just knows me. She's yeah. like, you're going to. I, I know what you have and I know how you're going to react and yeah. I know, don't let them do that. So I, I didn't do it. And um, so I sat there and then everybody was like, so what do you have? And I was like, I don't even know what I got for real. Yeah. So I'm a t- I take the 30 days and I edit it and I got to about 50 strong minutes. Okay. Like, mm. This is fucking incredible. And I'm like, it's it's a feature because it's over 45 minutes. Right. right. So I was like, I want to satisfy everyone's hatred. Yeah, I got my peers, and they're calling me like, "Yo, let me see a cut." And I'm like, "See, I don't, I didn't go to school for it or none of that shit. Right. I'm right. just like a movie. I know movies, and I'm right, like, you know, so I know what it's supposed to look like, and I know how it's supposed to feel. Right. Right. But when my peers that have done it and everything like that, and they're calling me, they was kind of like intimidating me. They're like, "Yo, I want to see it. I can't wait to see it." <laughs> right. but I'm like, "Yo, click. You're never it's you're, different. Yeah, it's you're different never you get fucking it seeing it. Click. Never, <laughs> never, ever. Click. I gave him the old school phone. You know, how, that's how you know how old. Right, yeah, right, right. Right. yeah. Click. For those at home, this is how you used to hang up on people. Click. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so then that made me go, okay, so wow, you fucking haters are going to not watch this like a normal movie. You guys are going to fucking watch this because it. it's me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I said, okay, back up. <laughs> back up. We're going to do this a different way then. So I had all of the 50 minutes and I'm like, I don't like, okay, the way Jay-Z and all these new rappers copy Jay-Z and say, oh, mm-hmm. I don't write. I don't write. Yeah. Well, I used to do music and I don't write. Right. Uh, so I didn't write the script. Okay. I'm a photographic memory. Everybody that was on set, or if you see any BTS, you don't, you won't see a clipboard or anything in anyone's hand because mm. I'm telling them what to do and I'm Interesting. telling them exactly how I see it and exactly how it's supposed to be done. Okay. And anytime I did take the time to make a a a, a, sto- a shot list and all right. the other yeah. shit, they would completely fuck the whole day off, and I would be <laughs> super pissed because it took me super long to do that. And I was like, this right. is why I don't fucking do that. Right. It could change at any time, and then. 
the papers are up in the air, so yeah. fuck all of that. We yeah. didn't have no permits either, so it's like, what the fuck are we planning for? Yeah. I have to wing it once I get there anyway. Right. right. So, right. anyway. I love but, the way Joey thinks. Just get shit done. It, so, <laughs> that's uh, a yeah, shout out to Issa Rae, because um, I was watching one of her old clips one day, and I'm sitting up here, mm-hmm. I know everybody. Yeah. So, I'm like, I'm more inclined to be in the room with you and be like, oh, yeah, it's my man, so yeah, 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 woo. And I'm, but you know how I many scripts I passed off to my friends yeah. that didn't even give a, a half a fuck. Mm. Half, like a, a, a minuscule of a fuck. So um, I like, gave what are that up. Are, what are friends for, huh? That Not point. for that. They're yeah. like for after you get it done. Like, yeah. hey, I'm here. So um, I was watching Issa Rae and she was like, um, a lot of people spend a lot of time like reaching up. Like, ooh, I got to find Steven right. Spielberg. I wish I could find this guy, that guy. Right. And she's like, they don't even pay attention to like reach across. You'll get right. a lot of work done if you reach right. across. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, Ding ding ding! I said, no, lots. Fuck it, we, I'm reaching across. And right. when I wrote, when I reached across and said, "Yo, I'm doing a movie," I called you. I called you. Remember, I told you to right. do that. Assembled the Voltron. Then they built it, and they would come. Then I, I got a real buzz. They was like, "Yo, what is this?" Right. And so that 50 minutes. Long story short, that 50 minutes wasn't. It wasn't my masterpiece. Mm. Everybody, everybody would have liked <laughs> it, but I, I, it, I, I could. It, I, I work like this. If I could still hear haters in my head, mm-hmm. right. then it's not done. Yeah. I like to work. Until I don't really hear you saying much. Right. Aside from me saying, bro, you're watching too hard. Right. Uh, you caught that, you're watching too hard. Right. I'm OCD. <laughs> I didn't sleep for a year. If you caught that, I, I absolutely caught it. Right. But then that means you're watching too hard. Yeah. Just enjoy the movie. Yeah. So back to me dying. So we go through all of that. So the 30 days, we, we go back to work. We're on set. We have a skeleton crew. We don't have a whole crew. Right. We have yeah. a skeleton crew. And even less, now that everyone's scared and out of work. Right. But we had to get it done. Shout out to my illegitimate crew. Shout out to my uh, illegitimate crew, uh, Josh and uh, G2 and the rest of the DCLA staff because we was a skeleton crew and we did the feature film. We like did everything. So right. um, we'll be on set. And this is like COVID, prime time. Right. And I called everybody said, yo, if y'all ain't scared, I ain't scared. Let's, let's did you guys wear masks on stage? Nah, none of that. We, we, just, we, just... we went with God. Okay, let's, yeah. They operate like that. So right. I was on set. <clears throat> I was on set the first day. I was like, I can't believe I fucking... And this time it cost me more money than it should have because uh, the production house I was using is closed down. Okay. So now mm. I have to rent the equipment. Yeah. So not only am I overextended on the budget and it's in a pandemic and you were in a pandemic, like people were mm-hmm. shell-shocked just mm-hmm. at the... Just period. So yeah. I'm like, um, my bell is rung, like I'm in fucking Iraq, and I'm like, <laughs> let's do it. I'm like, yeah. And then I start looking at him, like, yo, should I even be standing by you, bro? I got kids <laughs> and shit. Like, where have you been? Like, what's up? Right. But then my homeboy, I love my crew. Shout out to my uh, Mitchell from DCL. I love my crew because my homeboy was like, look, bro, I got tested yesterday. Yeah. I'm good. The other homie was like, I got tested Wednesday. Mm. They test me every day. So they're week. taking care of themselves. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, well, I ain't been nowhere in six months. So look, We'll use your test on Mondays, and we're going to use your test on Wednesdays. And as long as nobody goes nowhere, which right. fucking asshole should not be going anywhere, right, right. pandemic outside, then we can finish this. Yeah. So we did that. I used to hyperventilate on, on the set and have to disappear and go, I cannot believe I'm out here. Yeah. Okay, but just get it done. You pay me. Let's just go. <laughs> right? So we got through it. But um, they kept shutting down the fucking city. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, yo, I can't. The buzz <clears throat> is dying. I can't do a premiere. Yeah. People, you know, so I said- the very next time he opens up this fucking city, I'm going to plan my premiere. Yeah. Mm. I didn't know how much that was going to take on myself and my, my my partner that was helping me. Yeah. So for 90 days straight, it sounds like a lot of time, but it wasn't a lot of time. Like We ran into every possible hiccup editing the movie yeah. and trying to finish the movie. And I colored it myself. I edited it myself. Yeah, I saw my, that. My my boy and myself sound designed it. My son scored sound it. sound like MASH. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah my son, my <laughs> Ill- illegitimate son, he scored it. Wow. So I'm kicking his ass like, bro, you got to, I need the music and all of that. So then the 90 days is willing down. I got it all on tape. I looked so deranged. Like I, <laughs> I wasn't sleeping. I was high off endocrine and uh, adrenaline and yeah. all that shit. <laughs> that shit is a real high. Yeah. I would sit there. Until like, you crash. Until you crash. And that's what happened. I was, I would sit there. I'd be editing like four or five in the morning and I would get sleepy and then I would feel yeah. In my body. And I was Joe. like, the yep. fuck was yeah. that? Yep. Yeah. And I roll up some weed. And now it feels like I'm smoking weed on ecstasy. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. So I'm loaded. That takes me to 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Here's the <clears throat> kicker. Here's where I traumatize myself. Fucking, um, I have like 14 hard drives on top of the desk. <laughs> yeah, for, for serious. Like, this was a, this was a, a job. 
14 hard drives on top of the desk. So after me and my man's finished downstairs at like six in the morning, seven in the morning, I'm like, I'm gonna go give me a couple hours of sleep, but I have to at least start to back yeah. this up. Right. right. So you start to back up. And I'm I like I have a photographic memory, I have a coic memory, mm-hmm. everything. So yeah. I can go to sleep and I'm I can wake up and say, Hey, you know, no, no, two plus two is four. Like yeah. I heard you saying it's about to be six. You fucking up. Right. I had to tell you that. Go back to sleep. So I'm sleep. And it became to a point to where I could hear the hard drive stop and hear the computer take a rest, which means it's not communicating mm. and shit is fucked off. Yeah. I'd be in my dream having the best dream ever and the end of the dream be like, pass me them, that, the drink. What? The hard drive ain't going. Wake up, bro. Yeah. Hey, wake yeah. up. And I wake up, mother. <clears throat> that drives me crazy because- it takes it's so much information on those hard drives and the, the files are so big, it takes like an hour to yep. get everything to start communicating mm, again. Yep. So I can't go back to sleep. Yeah. I'm a nervous wreck sitting there waiting for it to start communicating again, start the goddamn uh, thing all the way over again before you know it. It's nine o'clock, the kids are up, the sun's up, it's time yeah. to smoke more weed and go about the day. Yeah. And back to for, work. Did that for about 90 days till I caught pneumonia. Oh and was God. dehydrated and was going off ex- like exhaustion. So I went to the doctor across the street from my house, but I was dumping footage. I was saving the movie. Yeah. I had to go drop the movie off at the theater. So I'm at the doctor. Luckily, it's across the street. And I go in there and I say, look, doc, I ain't got time to play with you. I need me an inhaler. I need some of that fucking cough syrup with the promethazine <laughs> shit up in there. And I need um, some, an- some 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 um, antibiotics for this shit I'll be having in my chest. When I cough, I cough hard. And when if the shit don't stop, yeah. that's what I need. So, so what you going to do? So I'm going to do exactly what you said. I'm going to go get you an inhaler. I'm going to get you some of that cough medicine shit with yeah. promethazine shit. Get you some antibiotics. Get you up out of here. I said, I like you, doc. Took that shit. My dumb ass wanted to get rid of the cough so early. I can't say it on camera. But anyway, so I head all the way to um, <laughs> I head all the way to uh, LA to drop off the movie, and it's fucking. I'm insane. By the time I get to the city, it's fucking traffic everywhere, and I oh haven't been to sleep, and I like lose my mind. I see all the cars. I like have a panic attack. I can't breathe. Think about how far it is to the movie. Yeah. My body said, "Look, bro, you're gonna either pay attention to traffic." Or you're going to keep yourself alive. But I'm mm. not going to do both. Mm. I'm either going to hold you alive mm. or I'm going to pay attention to traffic. So I said, okay, get off the freeway. Right. He said, yeah, you better. As mm. I got off the freeway, he was like, I, I thought you would make this decision because I was going right. to collapse on you. So mm. I, I pull over. I sent out an SOS to the team. Yo, somebody got to come pick up the hard drive. I'm dead. I'm on I'm on the corner of the uh, what's the name. They like, I'm still the general. I'm looking at my phone. He like, I'm on the way. But he's like two hours away. I'm on the way. He's like an hour and a half away. I'm like... Fuck it. Yeah. I lay there for about 30 minutes. I said, okay, that was that's cool. Sit down and text, yo, fuck that. Y'all gonna take too long. I'm on the way. Mm. I get it to the place. She hooks it all up. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna lay in the car and just die. She comes out and say, there's something wrong with the movie. I'm like, there cannot be fucking nothing wrong with the movie because I live three hours away and I fuck, I'm dead. And she's like, no, 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 don't worry. Just give me a few hours. I can fix it. I said, all right, I'm gonna go get a haircut so I don't look like shit to me. <laughs> Even though I'm thinking I should just sleep in the parking lot. Right. Right. So I go, I'm in the line and I look at the, I'm, I go to get the haircut and I'm there. I cuss out my partner. You ain't shit. You ain't never there when I need you. Click. Hang up in his face. That I shouldn't even argue with him. That made me hyperventilate. Yeah. Got to the line and I, that took so much out of me. I'm at the light and I'm looking at the barbershop and I'm looking at this parking lot and I'm like, fuck this haircut. I should just go. <laughs> I want to go to sleep. <laughs> fuck this haircut. And... I, it was his fault. I don't give a fuck. It was his fault. I'm looking through my rear views. I looked through everything. I made sure all the cars was gone. They was all gone. Bam! A fucking oh Harley gosh. Davidson flips over my car. No. Yeah, and flies like 100 yards in the middle of the road. Holy shit. And that was it. Like, I didn't have any more mind over matter. That was it. I was, I class. I can't, I can't speak. I couldn't do anything. And I'm looking at this guy in the street. And I'm like. No way. No way. I just kept looking. I'm like, okay. And then he jumped right up. So like, okay, oh he's not God. dead. It's like, wow, he can take one. <clears throat> I'm like, my car is fucking okay. Did he, did he rush? Did he rushed the whip. Nah, he, he was rushed. in shock. But all of these Latinos rushed the whip, mm. and then the questionable black guys that were around <laughs> were rushing the whip to try to help. But I already know that game. Like, bro, back up. Yeah. Bro. Guess who's in the parking lot? Ooh. My partner that I hung up and said, you ain't never there when I need you. <laughs> he, he Shout found, out to him. He, he was right, only there. He was oh, right wow. in the He was there. 
He right in the fucking parking lot. Shout out to my man. Well, you Will. lucky. Yeah. I, I said, I said, I'm fucking dying. Where the fuck is you at? He said, I'm right behind you, you asshole. I seen the whole thing. I said, oh, we'll get over here. They fucking with me. They, they fucking with me. He ran over there and I'm laying in the back. I said, bro, the movie in my pocket. Keep them motherfuckers away from the truck. So he handled everything, yeah. got me some water, got me some bananas yeah. and shit, sent me in an Uber home. The lady called me and said, yo, the movie work. I'm like, cool. Put me in a lift. Yeah. That was the best time in my life in that lift, two hours home, because I didn't have to think. I didn't have to move. Yeah, you just had a rest. But Mind Over Matter was over. I couldn't move anymore. There was oh no more moving gosh. anymore. I laid in the bed and I said, yo, I can't move. I can't talk. I lost my voice. So you had pneumonia at that yeah. moment. It was a done deal. So I laid there the entire night and I couldn't move. And anytime I tried to move or think about something, yeah. I had a panic attack. Wow. So the next day I'm laying there and I'm like, yo, I'm not even going to the premiere. Yeah. And I send the group chat. I'm like, yo, can't make it. I'm dead. They like, they all respond one by one. Yo, don't <laughs> worry. We got you. It's all good. I said. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't care. <laughs> Not only did they <laughs> did they not care, just them being so overly confident right, they, right. they could handle it yeah. made me extremely uncomfortable. Right. So I said, No, I'm going. Here we go. <laughs> oh my God. So I get there, I get there, and I'm just like a ghost, just not even there. I'm like, if all I gotta do is sit down, then I, I could I could take pictures and do what I gotta do. Yeah. The red carpet's not up. The thing's not up. The movie's not working. It's a shit show. Right. So, where where was the premiere at? At the Lemire Cinema in um, mm-hmm. Beverly Hills. Okay. okay. Yeah. It was a nice place. I saw it. Was. It. I think really that nice. was um. That's the same place. Uh, my my idol, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy, did Beverly Hills Coffee premiered it there. So I went oh. there. Oh. Like you see the jacket and shit. I'm trying that's to be Eddie so Murphy. Cool. So um, I get there. Everything's to shit, and I just have to basically find the energy and perform. Yeah. By the time I get everybody, we sold out. By the time I get everybody in there, and through pandemic mask, everybody still sold yeah. out. In a theater, in clothes, nobody scared. They want to see dirty cops. <laughs> I'm inside, and um, I decide to die on the side of the the aisle, and people are walking in like, "Yo, is that Joey dead in the road?" And yeah. like, my wife's like, "Yo, come sit in the middle. I got a seat safe for you." But I had the energy to get to that shit, mm. so I'm like, "You know what? Let me get up. I'm gonna sit right there and just try to sleep for that movie's an hour and forty five. I'm gonna try mm. to sleep." But I'm in there, and I know every fucking line. So I can't even sleep because I'm saying every line. I just edited this whole shit for right. a year. So I'm saying every line. I know when the joke is coming. I know right. when they're going to laugh. And I'm like, I can't fucking sleep. <laughs> I'm like, I can't sleep. But they're loving this shit, so who cares? Yeah. So long story short, they come and get me. And they like, yo, there's people at the front. They said they bought tickets, and they can't they can't get in. Right. So I go to the front. I thought it was like some friends or some shit. And I got to the front, and I looked. I was like... Well, what you want me to do about it? I'm dead. There's no room. Like, and then the lady that owns it, she was like, "Yeah, and we're at capacity. We yeah. got people all on the walls. People on the walls. People wow." Walls. And then she's like, "It's done." So I looked at them people, and I was like, "Yo, what you want me to do about it?" And I said, "Give them their money back." And she, he said, "They don't want their money back." And I looked again. I said, "I don't know none of them people." Yeah, and I know my friends. Friends said they really want to see the movie. Yeah. Oh, wow. They like probably follow me on Instagram or whatever right. Right. to see the movie. Same yeah. Through. Those kids snuck into the theater and was in the back with me. Dope. I don't even I don't know how they got in there. That's dope. They wow. made sure they saw that movie though. That's dope. So after that, I love that. I'm getting ready to go home, but they're having an after party. And the promoter calls me and said, Bro, I don't think they're gonna show up if you don't show up. So yeah. You have to show up. I said, No, they're gonna show up. I called my cast and they was like, You going? <sighs> <laughs> I said, all right, bro, I'm on the way. Dying. Right? <laughs> so I get there, and one of my homies- And you have, a, have a mo- pneumonia. Walking pneumonia. This- and now I see why they say you can walk with it, because mm-hmm. I'm apparently walking and doing everything oh with God. it, right? Yes, so um, I get to the to, to the after party, and my good buddy Troy is there. Mm-hmm. And he's like, bro, you don't look good. I said, I, I'm not good. He said, I'm going to, you want to drink? I said, I don't drink. Mm-hmm. He said, you want some tacos? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Give me four or five of them tacos. I'll be ready. You gave me tacos, <laughs> inhale. I said, all right, now I can go in this after party, which flipped me out, which weirded me out because I'm watching people party with no mask. And I'm like, well, I'm holistic and I'm go with God, but you guys are really living on the edge of Right. Me. right. Yeah. Now, is this 2021? Is this 2020? 2020. I'm probably 2021. Lost, I don't know. It's probably 2021 now at this point. Yeah, yeah. 2021. 
It's still yeah, COVID. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's 2021. September 24th, 2021. Yeah. Okay. So we do that, and I go to the after party, and I'm dying there, and I just have to perform and shake hands, make friends, and do all that yeah. shit. But God kept giving me the energy. Yeah. He's like, bro, my, my shout out to my, uh, one of my partners, Cuddy, uh, Media Spill Network. He kept telling me, he said, bro, take your ass home. And I don't, he said, this fool called me from a Chicago number the next day because he, <laughs> And, I, and he's texting me and trying to hold conversations. Then he called, but I didn't answer. So then he called from his phone. And he said, I was testing you. That was me from that Chicago number. I told you not to answer for nobody. I told you to sleep. You have wow. holding full-blown conversations. I said, but I didn't answer the phone. Right. Uh, right. He said, you're right. You did. <laughs> I said, I was texting. I wasn't going to answer the phone. Right. Right. So anyway, after that, the movie took a downturn because I couldn't do any press. I couldn't do any podcasts. I couldn't mm. talk. I was down for like four months. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't entertain any deals. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do none yeah, of the stuff I had. Yeah, planned. you were sick. Yeah. I was, you were I sick. Was, was dying. So then, by the time I got together, got it back together, I'm like, yeah. Shit, how do you fucking get the buzz back? Right, right. right. So I said, well, really, that would that doesn't count. That was a soft opening because that was the pandemic. So right. then I got distribution, and we we came. We decided to have a rollout to get it on the platforms. Okay. So I said, what I'll do oh. now is I'll repeat the process to a different. Um, audience and have them ready for the rollout on the platform. So then I did another premiere, sold it out oh. with different folks and, you know, kept it going. Awesome. And then it hit the platforms and we were like most popular comedy for the whole uh, Christmas break and on into the first quarter and stuff like that. So the movie's wow. still really doing well. It's on Amazon, all of the streaming networks aside from Netflix because they wasn't really talking about no money. That's really yeah. everyone talking about no money. Right. Yeah. So you check it out, Dirty Cops LA. One, and the series is on its way, and part two is on its way. How um, exciting. So, yes. Ooh. I haven't let you guys ask me anything. I just wanted to give I you that. I love the energy, I wanted though. to give you that. <laughs> I had to give you that. I, I want you to know that. that. It all is so traumatic. Once you ask me that, I have to... That, yeah. Yeah. Nah, that was a good story, though. We needed to hear nah, that. No, nah, I, could, I, could, I can relate. Like, trying to put on so many hats. Yeah. You know, by the time you get to the end, it's like, it's it's insane, like... Your mind is just like somewhere else. Like people ask you questions, and you're like, "Yeah, what's, what's happening?" You know, and I look at a the different footage, world. and it gives me like a panic attack because I look right. at footage. And I'm like, "Bro, you are not well." Right. You're in everybody's face doing this stuff, and you're just your mind is gone. Yeah. I was having breakdowns and stuff. I remember I threw myself out of my direct my producer chair because I just needed to inflict some type of pain. Right. I couldn't understand why this shit wasn't working. It was a problem every fucking corner, and I'm like, "Boom." I'm and I was th throwing a tantrum in it, in it. I fell out of my chair and rolled into the closet. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, but I needed that. I just yeah. to work. I needed that. And then uh, I remember one night I was throwing a tantrum. Like, Fuck it. It's done. Fuck them. Fuck right. the movie. <laughs> Fuck it. And shout out to my man, Kelly Vision. He's like, I'm not going to let you do that, bro. Mm. I'm not going to let you do that. And he stayed up to like 7 o'clock in the morning by himself doing it. Every time I opened my eyes, he was. Wow. In the movie. So he he helped me get uh, across the finish line for sure, for sure. Because right. everybody watched me come so far. Yeah. They was like, yo, because uh, it was the pandemic. So a yeah. lot of people couldn't participate, even though they wanted to. Right. Yeah. Once they seen how far I could get it, they was like, I am not going to let you not do this. Right. Bro. right everybody right. jumped on at the end. I was doing the, the last. Now they see the vision, huh? Yeah. Not All even that now hard they work. saw the Yeah, kind of <laughs> that, kind of that. But like people were, one of my partners was going to school. <laughs> Uh, they were in school and they didn't even live in the city. I decided, like I said, we. I decided I wrote this like overnight, like in the, in ten minutes, mm. and I casted it in another twenty minutes, and then I shot the fifteen pages that I wrote. Right. And some shout out to my my uh, my homegirl Tay Ridge. She's a, she was a student at the film school at the time. Mm. I kind of punked her out of her time on set. I had my real guns because that's what I was shooting with. Mm -hmm. Jackson had real guns, mm -hmm. but they were unloaded. Mm -hmm. But I had my real guns and. I'm real, you know, I I go into character real quick. Right. So the set manager kept telling me, yo, there's someone else there, the next people are here. And I pulled out the gun and said, bro, I'm getting my 30 minutes one way or another. <laughs> just turned around and left. Right. And so um I got my 30 minutes one way or another. But by the time I opened the door, she was like, You motherfucker, we out here. It was our time. We got shit to do. Yeah. But and she wouldn't even shake my hand. And, then, <laughs> and she saw Slink and she saw uh, all the people in the there. badges yeah, and shit. Yeah. And she was like, yo, is that Black Jesus? I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, what are you shooting? I was like, 30 Cops LA. She's like, well, what's that? I was like, I don't, I don't know. It's like a, I don't know. At that time, it was just a skit. It was a, yeah. it was a 10 minute skit. Right. right. And um, she was like, you got Black Jesus and you doing a 10 minute skit? 
<laughs> on the set. I was like, yeah. She was like, you should do a movie. I was like, how the fuck am I going to do a movie? I have 15 pages. Right. Just keep writing. Ding. I'm like, well, I'll, yeah. that's nothing. I'll, I'll write it on the fly. So anyway, that made me decide to, I was always on a deadline because I didn't have these actors for a long time. Right. I had no idea what the budget was going to be because mm-hmm. I decided in that moment to do it. So my mm-hmm. partners was like, wait, we're doing a movie? We're doing a movie while we have these people. Yeah. So I wrote the, I would write the script on the fly. You could ask the, the characters. I would send them. I'm still such in movie mode. I would say, did you get the lyrics? Me, <laughs> the lyrics. Yeah, to me, I'm I'm like sending out lyrics. Uh, I, would, I, would write, I, would, I would write the scenes and they get text messages. They couldn't even get like scripts. Like, yo, yeah. tomorrow, 11 o'clock. Here's your shit. Here's wow. Your shit. And they show up. And shout out to my crew because they would be in scenes with like D-Lay or, or Black Jesus. Yeah. And they don't act. None of my friends act or nothing. I just, right. I, I know what you guys can do. And they right. some of them would get to say, like, bro, and they would do it all fucked up. <laughs> and the and the funny thing to to me would be like, bro, I wrote this for you. Like I wrote it in your voice. I know right, right, that's right. what I'm good at. And you sit up here and you fuck this all the way up. Like how? I I heard you say this yesterday. This right, is why right. I put this in the script. Yeah. You said it yesterday, and they didn't get that part. So then I would have to show them. Yeah, it's not. Don't overact or nothing like yeah, that. It's like your yourself. average conversation with me, bro. This is the type of shit you would say. Oh, on God. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Come on. So once I talked. A lot will helped a lot of my my friends nice. realize that bro he's just gonna shoot the shit with you. Right, they're standing in scenes with these folks and we don't have rehearsals. We never rehearse a day at all. Wow, like, at all. The whole movie is in, improv, freestyle, no rehearsal. Show up, just get it done. They they barely got the the lyrics ten minutes ago. They're lucky if they got them last night. Wow. So shout out to them because they all came to play. I saw you had my boy uh, Jock Kang up in there. He had a yeah, my man. Part. Yeah, he yeah. was also um, security. See, the thing about Inglewood is you got to have the face for the space. So we were shooting at the Level Up store. Shout out to my man Two Eleven. Now Two Eleven just left. Uh-huh. He just would leave. Just shot the scene and yeah. left. <laughs> he just left. I'm like, say bye to anybody. <laughs> no, he didn't. So he left, and then Jai had to stay there. To okay. make sure the store was open. Well, he, right. he works at the store, but he also had to facilitate because, you know, it's the neighborhood. So yeah. gangbangers is coming up there yeah, and all the yeah, other yeah. shit. Now, I'm good. I have a face. Yeah. But my crew or someone was Crips and everything like that. So the gangbangers like started standing there and wouldn't mm. leave and asking who is him. And I'm like, right, he's right. just a regular guy. He's just, <laughs> he's nobody. He's just dressed like right, that. Right. So we, we hide in him. The like MA pulled through there. I'm like, it was like a movie inside a movie. <laughs> Quiet on set. This big pull through with a Mexican boss in the back seat and like a hench, obvious henchman driving the car and looking like, what the fuck is going on here? Just drove straight through my set. Like, dead, oh my like God. daring us to say anything. And the whole set is like, do you, do you see what's happening? Yeah. Wow. I'm like, can we get the goddamn shot <laughs> before we get shot? There's gang members and, 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 and cartel members. <laughs> we are in Inglewood, people. Wow. So, um, that was stressful. But yeah, that's how he ended up there. I was like, stamp against the wall. I'm going to put a girl next to you. Right. Like, I need you to, to do this real brief. So a lot of it, man, I had to just throw it together as we as we did it. Because I know what I wanted to see and I know how I want, it needs to look. Right. right. But we didn't have no scouts. We didn't have no permits or anything like that. Yeah. So I would get there and me and my little illegitimate crew, I would go, now this is what I want to happen. You guys with the camera show me how it has to happen. Right. 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 And then we would get it done. Damn. Wow. That's what's up. That's what's so, up. So you were doing music before all this, right? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Before we before we get we we gotta get some some love to the popcorn. Oh, our popcorn <laughs> segment. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. All right, Sorry. It is time for the bu- <laughs> <laughs> second. We go let's do it. We're gonna give Joey a little break. Uh what popcorn do we have today? It, it's called No wait, Joey has to guess what popcorn it is. No, we can't have him guess it. We don't do it like that. Now you do it? No, nah, so I got a pretty good eye. We can change it up this time. Why are we gonna change? Well, we, maybe let him try it. We hadn't talked about changing. We'll let him. <laughs> we let a, we'll let him try it. it. You trying to do it on the fly like Joey do his movies on the fly? Exactly. Get shit done. For real. <laughs> Here you go. Are you trying it? Yeah, you're trying it, and you gotta guess. Let us know what it is. Like flavor? Yeah. Yep. What flavor? Pepper Jack or like some Parmigiani? No. Mm. I don't taste anything sweet. That's what's like. Nah, you got to get sweet. a good one. Ain't sweet. You got to get a good one. Okay, that time. 
Now you, I'm awesome. now you taste it. I'm awesome. I tasted something very familiar. What is it? I think it's Lowry's seasoning salt. Is it? You're you're getting uh, closer. You're getting closer. It wasn't Lowry's. It, it nah. It's, but I taste. You, you taste something though. It's like okay. A what little, do you rate it? Well, he don't know what he eat. Eight. You give it an eight. Ranch sauce? Is that ranch seasoning? No, no ranch. It's a barbecue. It's barbecue. barbecue. Barbecue popcorn. I yeah. could not. I couldn't get there. I barbecue couldn't get there. I said, That's a season mm-hmm. I'm very familiar with. You said Laurie's. <laughs> I mean, shit. You put Laurie's on your barbecue. I know I do. That's what I was saying. You yeah. Close. Actually, we stopped using Laurie's like ten years ago. Really? Uh, yeah. I suggest all black folks or people. Period. Stop using Laurie's. What do you use? Adobo? No. What? All organics. All organics. It's got to be an actual seasoning. Mm. Really? Like, Laurie's is not a seasoning. Laurie's is um, basically before they said it, before saying it, it's like a GMO blend. Like, look at it; it's not a seasoning. Kind of looks like glass. It's not like herbs and spices made into a seasoning. I just used it last night. <laughs> Lots of folks do, and they wow. you grow up thinking that that's how you season your food and everything like that. But your food will change dramatically when you. Well, which seasoning do you use? You got to go, salt, like I was saying, Trader Joe's. Trader and like Joe. That. Himalayan salt. Himalayan black salt. Sea salt. I have Himalayan salt. Black paprika. Black pepper. But see, and then, there you go, smoked paprika. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't give away all my, my secrets, but that's when you really learn how to cook because now you have to substitute for all of those flavors that, right, you, you that were in there. Missing. So, But that helps you. It helps uh, build your palate, and then you you're now you're cooking. Right. Now when you want to make some carne asada or some beef ribs, yep. ask my... um. My family about the beef ribs that I'll be hooking up. They're like, mm. what is this? I said, this is halal meat. So that's one reason why. So you're making me hungry right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. So you don't, you don't eat pork? No, I don't eat no pork. pork. The only pork I eat. Pork chop? On a, on a, no, I can't do that. <laughs> only pork I eat on occasion, and not even an occasion, occasion, because it won't even get brought into the house. But I'm a sucker for like a bacon on something. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Like, I don't eat bacon in breakfast or nothing like that. But, yeah. like, say I'm cheating because you can't really get what you, what I eat. Like, say we on set or I'm out of town somewhere. Right. I'll retort back to something from my childhood. And I'd be like, shit, the Carl's Jr. bacon western cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst fucking bacon you can Right? Eat. <laughs> right? And I have to tell myself it's the nostalgia. It's not even yeah. the burger. Nine right. times out of ten, I'm sick right afterwards. Yeah. But the nostalgia. And I said, you got to stop it. Right. Stuff like that. You know, shit like that. Or like bacon bits in the salad. If I go to like a nice nice restaurant with a nice salad bar oh, that and they got sounds so good. apple wood mm. crumbled yeah, bacon, yeah. Mm, mm, I'm going to have to mm. go dumb. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'm going to have to go dumb. But other than that. You're making me really hungry right now. Yeah. What, what you rate Give me that popcorn. popcorn. What you rate it? <laughs> I'm going to rate that a 10. Woo! <laughs> you got to give me a hand if clap it, for if that. If more heavy barbecue sauce, it would be a 10. That's I why I like it because it's not since it's popcorn. It, it's like why it just gives it that like. This shit is a six to be it's honest. It's fire. It's not that. No, I like the barbecue sauce. It was good. It, no, you it's, like, a, it's a good flavor, like, but it, it being subtle, I couldn't tell if it was ranch or barbecue. Yeah, but it was nostalgic. I knew it was one of the flavors that right. I loved, and it was like just right. Right, it was. For it, it was just popcorn. Right. I didn't need anything else. You are. It was just right. Yeah, this shit was not a ten. You need to stop it. The way the way you were eating it before <laughs> the podcast. Still eating it. Yeah, he still eating it. I mean, it's decent, but it ain't no ten. <laughs> He's the worst. As far as popcorns go, it kind of was a 10 because you got to dope popcorn up for it. Dude, we, we eat popcorn yeah. every week. She knows this is not a 10. We oh, eat. Well, I'm going to have to come back then. Yeah, y'all yeah, got yeah. popcorn every week. We eat popcorn yeah. every week. Oh, it's we not a 10. Have you. We got some good popcorn. This, this, this was a 10 to me. Shout out to, what was it called? Rob? Backstage. Rob's Backstage Popcorn. Barbecue Popcorn. Oh, it's an actual brand and everything? Yeah. yeah. Y'all like doped it up yourself. Oh, no, no, no. If that's how he serves his popcorn, it's a 10. Yeah. That's that was a ten to me. Man, y'all yeah. give it too much love. You I mean, just hard. Yeah, I don't know what he's basing it off of because I can. I bought some popcorns and be like, "Yeah, why did you buy this?" Yeah, like the white cheddar popcorns maybe might be good. We we have white been eating popcorn fire. for the last three four months. So <laughs> <laughs> look, man, it's, it's, it's I not have a my ten. tens and I have my twos. Okay, it's maybe a seven. I gave it an eight. I gave it a ten. Initially. So I need my my clap, my audience clap. It it ain't better than um. The uh the coconut oil one we had. No, that sounds No, I think this one is better. Then the coconut oil? The coconut oil didn't even have a taste. Mm. The lesser evil one that we just had with Cisco? Yeah, I didn't give it a 10. You are Did I, I didn't it? give it a 10. You are tripping. <laughs> I got to go watch that episode again. I don't remember. 
It was nowhere <laughs> near as good as that one. Maybe not to you, but this one's good. This one's really good. Whatever. <laughs> you, Matt's you, just a you, hater. Hey, you're going to stop rating Popcorn. <laughs> you're going to give us a bad name. Whatever. <laughs> Shout out to Backstage. Yeah, Rob's Backstage. Rob's pop- Backstage Popcorn. No, nah, it's, it's a good right. popcorn. It's a yeah. good popcorn. We appreciate you, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Special shout out. Go, go try it. Go try it. It's the barbecue flavor. We got some Indian spice over there, too. He got an Indian spice oh, one. Oh, wow. Yeah, that one's... Yeah, we ain't tried that one yet. Yeah. Like a Veronica, give it a 12. This one's good. Oh, I told y'all this building is special to me, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember which way I walked up, but a buddy of mine, shout out to my man T, he used to own a studio in here, and we used to... Uh, was it down... I know it was one that was downstairs. Yeah, but he was downstairs and he moved upstairs. He used to have... Couple of these rooms. Okay. Yeah, okay. Six point studios. Dope. Dope. Wow. I, I didn't even know he left. He he was here for a long time. Yeah. yeah he was yeah. one of the first like black owned studios in the area. That's crazy. I remember I was at the guitar center that's not too far from here. What a trip. And he had his uh you know how they put the little homemade flyer with the numbers ripped up down in the bottom mm-hmm. one. Yeah. I was like seven, 16, 17. And that was the big thing. Like, we all was starting to do music, but there was no access to studios anywhere. Like, right, yeah. right. nowhere. Right. No homes, definitely no home studios. So we would go, you know, window shop at the Guitar Center. No, actually, we would go to the Guitar Center, shout out to my boy Cuddy. <laughs> we used to, we're the reasons why they put the locks on the keyboards where you can't put the floppy disk and stuff and save mm. it. Anymore. Why is that? Because we used to make albums up there. Ah. Uh, like, back go there, like, fuck with know, it. Yeah. Suburban people or like rich folks or whatever. Yeah. We, 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 you can't afford the equipment. Um, kids from the hood, we catch the 212 all the way up to South Bay Galleria where mm. the, the guitar center was at. And my boy would go in there and you could, you know, play on the keyboards mm. and let you have your own little session, yep, yep. The headphones and stuff. Mm. And, you, and they didn't mind you saving your work and everything like that. Yeah. But once they saw that, he was an everyday thing. And I remember one time we got into a, a battle in there with these with mm. these other kids. We were like, what the <laughs> fuck are y'all doing here? Because once that was the thing. So yep. we were like, what the fuck are y'all doing here? Yeah. And now y'all blowing up the spot and right. y'all on our keyboard for one. Right. We came to use the keyboard. Right. So I said, let's battle for it. Yeah. Like, I know that's an end all be all because <laughs> I'm going to eat every one of them alive, <laughs> right? So I battled them fools. They had to leave. And then slowly but surely, the manager said, y'all can't be here that long. Y'all can't do this. Y'all can't do that. Then they put the locks on them. Like, y'all can't wow. even save, save y'all shit. So that's where that comes from. Just like in Target, they put the shampoo up in the shit. Now y'all <laughs> right, can't get it. Right. They're like, nah, y'all not going to come here. We was making albums like, yo. Wow. That's insane. That's insane. Good times, huh? So what what let's let's talk about your rap career. Um Yes. You know, how long ago was it? You know, long, you had long a crew. Time ago. Long, long time ago. Like what 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 was that experience like, like pursuing music? Um It was kinda like it was who I was for a long time. Yeah. Like, you know, back in high school I used to do voicemails for people. Like the girls right, would right. Me to rap their voicemails, so I would go yep. platinum. In other schools, like I tell my son all the time, like, bro, I'm popular before there was social media. Like, right, I'm popular off of three way phone calls, mm-hmm. party lines. Like, party you gotta, line. I'm word yeah. of mouth popular. You, you well, I forgot about party yeah. lines. Yeah, I'm word of mouth popular. <laughs> my name will ring bells in your school, and no one's ever seen my face. Right, I'm from the days of, oh, so you, you know what I mean? So, what? so I used so to you, voice you, you grew up in Inglewood, right? Inglewood, LA. LA. Inglewood, oh, LA. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I went to Westchester High School. Okay, so I graduated from and shit. What uh, what year did you graduate? That's a secret. <laughs> you look so young, though. Like, what is your secret to look this young? Um, Gosh, uh, cocoa butter and uh, yeah, shea <laughs> yeah. butter, right, right? Salads, salads. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really. I don't really eat bad until I'm cheating. But oh yeah, everything I, organic. I forgot I, Trader Joe's. He shops at Trader do Joe's. Gotta Trader everybody. Joe's. Trader Joe's and Sprouts. Trader Joe's be falling off. Trader Joe's is only good for certain things. Sprouts is. Yeah, a, is, I love Sprouts actually. Yeah, I, yeah. I frequent Sprouts. That's my, that's my spot. Yeah. Nice. So pursuing the music, you rapping. You had a crew, or I had a crew. I had one of the best crew. Shout out to them. Okay. What was, was the name? What's the name of the crew? At back in the day, I had to kind of tell my my, my age, but yeah, <laughs> um, it was called uh, the Money Cats. This was like when Rockefeller and everything was taking off, but we was too young to <clears throat> be that. Right? It's okay. It was right, right, right. It's ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. But this was before L A really had a, a underground rap scene for like. Fly guys, mm. like you could be backpack rap, and they had a spot for you. And all right, be a battle Park. rapper, yeah, yeah right, Fay Dodo, yeah. and all of that shit. You could do all of that shit, but we were like the first type of like West Coast, like Rockefeller style crew, like 
Just nice. hustlers and fresh kids from different schools and stuff. And yeah. we did it like that. So, of course, we got a lot of attention because it was like, I was like a, a facilitator. Like, I'm like, bro, we're going to go get old boy from Hamilton. We're going to go get uh, <laughs> my producer from, from Inglewood. Mm. We're going to go link up with them fools. And, bro, we're, we're a crew. Yeah. So once I formed that little crew, then everybody was like, they had never really seen nothing like that. Like, you either a two-man crew or a three-man crew or a battle rap crew, but they had never seen all of us. Like, some of us wasn't even really friends. Like, my one of my best friends, Cuddy, yeah. he was friends, but, like, through another one of my, our friends, and mm. his girlfriend was one of my girl best friends. Mm. So she tricked us into, like, getting down. She, she knew I was for real about to do the music thing. She right. was like, she was going to take me to work one day. And she sent him. So I come downstairs, I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing here? And he's like... She told me to take you to work. I'm like, so we in the car. And he's driving. It's awkward as fuck. And he's like, so she said you're going to start doing music. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, bet she did. And he's like, you know I make beats? I don't even know what that means at this point. Right. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? You make yeah. beats. This is the guy that did the guitar center thing. So he goes, mm. pops in the tape. And it was not an instrumental. I was like, what the fuck is this? He said, I made it. I said, like, wow. what does that mean, bro? What do you what do you mean you made? He said, man, I, I made the beat. Right. I said, damn, you did this? I said, drop me off at work, nigga. Drop <laughs> me off at work, nigga. Come pick me up from work, nigga. Come pick me up from work. I called the homie. I was like, yo, we got a for real producer, my nigga. He makes <laughs> these shits, my nigga. He makes these shits. But my um, one of my uncles, he started making beats off the PlayStation. The PlayStation. What? Yeah, you should look this. You could everybody out there look it up. The MTV Music Generator. We turned that into a thing. Oh wow. The MTV Music Generator, and that's where we got real popular. So the year's ninety nine. Fuck it. That's I'm look young. The year's ninety nine. Yeah. So I go to my uncle, my uncle's spot. He been begging me to come over. I'm like, Unc, no, like no, right. I don't, you're just no. I'm not coming over so you can tell me your raps <laughs> and shit. Now nah, I'm good. So I finally come over, and um, I hear these beats, and I'm like, damn, this shit is rocking. I go in. And he has his TV and his PlayStation controller in his hand. He's like, what's up? <laughs> and it's playing. I don't even know what I'm looking at. It's yeah. playing on the TV and it's beating out the speakers. And I'm like, I'm like what the fuck is this? Right. More people who can make beats. that I didn't even know you make them shits like that. So What a trip. And he's making the beats. And I'm like, what is this? He's like, I said, uh, I'm, I'm rapping. I'm freestyling and shit. I'm like, let me get this beat. Let me get this beat. He said, nope. You go get the, he said, I'm a dope producer. You go get the game. You take it to your house. You see if you're a dope producer. <laughs> I said, what the fuck? I said, all right. So I go buy the game and I don't make beats at this point. I don't even understand how it works. I write. I, I'm, right. I can't even sit down long enough to play the keys because I'm always moving around writing and thinking. Yeah. Right. Visionary. So I put the homies on it. Put my cousin on it. Put the other homie in. I put the Cuddy guy on it. I'm like, you make beats on the keyboard and shit, nigga. See if you can figure this shit out. So... Um, my cousin kind of figured it out. He made a few couple, but Cuddy and my other boy, uh, shout out to my man, Classic, he they figured it out. So we would go to bigger studios, this studio right here. I remember in this studio. Wow. We come here, and he's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Because it didn't even play loud. It was on a regular TV, and it's 99, right. so it was a regular yeah. TV. Right. Yeah. Looking at it, and it kind of just looked like Atari, and the sounds aren't big. So he's right. like, fuck y'all supposed to do here? And we go... Remember the PlayStation had the red, yellow, and white cord? Yep. We go, right, yellow is for visual. Fuck it. Hey, take the red and white, bro, and plug that into your soundboard. Right, right. Wow. He's like, plug the PlayStation into my soundboard. Oh, <laughs> they're audio cords. So right. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm humor you guys. Right. He plugged them shits in. We looked at each other. We was like, Press the start button. That just said, bah, bah, bang, bang, bang. "Hold on, hold on." So, what chords did he plug in? The red and white chords. The audio. red and white chords. Yeah, yeah that That's you plug audio. into the TV. Yeah. The audio audio. Wow. But in PlayStation, it had yellow, red, and white. So you and they were together. So you had to just like be innovative and go. Well, fuck this chord. Here, take this. These two. Right. Wow. right. Actually, no. Leave the yellow plugged into the TV so I can see what I'm doing. Yep. And Give him those chords and he can play it. And he was looking like smart. He couldn't believe it. He was like, "That's insane." <laughs> So then he he dumped that into the Cubase. He was like, now I'm going to dump this into the Cubase for y'all. Now y'all have... He was able to do that? Yes. Holy shit. He said, I'm wow. going to dump this into the Cubase for y'all. So now we have the first two-track from the PlayStation. That's insane. We wow. have a two-track. And he was like, I'm going to beef up y'all hi-hats and everything. And yep. from that moment on, 
we didn't even go back to the Guitar Center because they put the locks on it. So we made whole albums off the PlayStation. Everybody was like, how the fuck are y'all doing off this shit? Off the PlayStation. You make it with a controller. It's classic. You make it with a, the video controller. So to even watch us do it, you'd never understand what we're doing. Right. You like... It, the so, concept. So, so to make it, do you, like, what program were you using in it's the PlayStation? The music, it's called the MTV Music Generator. But they, oh. they took that concept. They took that concept, and that's basically the same uh, DAW as Fruity Loops. Right, right, right. And everything else. But it was on MTV Music Generator, and you did it with a controller and not the keyboard. Right, mm. right, right. So it's basically Fruity Loops, but it was then, and it was the MTV Music Generator, and it was never supposed to be put on the big thing. It was like a video game. Damn. So we mastered it and was making these records off of it, <laughs> and we'd start dumping it into the Cubase, and we started getting traction. Like they, they thought that that was our gimmick. Like, yo, y'all make beats off the PlayStation. <laughs> but we got. I had a meeting with Kevin Black, at, and when he was at Interscope, and I'm in there and I'm playing it for him. And he's like, Yeah, this is dope. And I get that you made it off a of PlayStation, but I don't give a fuck. I'm like, What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, No one's gonna care that you made it off a of PlayStation. He said, You know why? I was like, why? He said, reach up there. I reached the guy a box. It was a big box full of demos. He was like, pick anyone you want. Anyone. Put it in. Put it in. That motherfucker came on big. Mm. I was like, God damn. He said, see, this, this is the sound. Yeah. You guys rap dope. The beats are dope. They, they can get you by. Coincidentally, now shake that Laffy Taffy. Yeah. That's an MTV Music Generator beat. Wow. Really? That's what they sound like. Yeah. That's exactly what they sound like. Well, that's not what our sound Because like. it kind of uh, sounds like yeah. the PlayStation, exactly. like right. a video game. That right. bass is called the Jub Bass. Oh. Everything is called Jub right. Bass. Everything they did in that was off the West name. So this, years later, we're like... What a trip. Right? And, yeah. So, yeah. So we did the PlayStation thing, but I did that for... Ever. I did all types of music shit, but it it couldn't keep my attention anymore once music went to where it was at. Right. Mm. So um I'm big on movies. Like I, I know every movie, I can recite every movie and shit like that. So I would write movies without writing movies. I never wrote it down. Mm. Right. I would just say, Hey, and then this happens and that happens. And that, <laughs> that would be dope, right? Yeah. And we would get high and do that for hours. And then shout out to my one of my partners, uh Sparkle Holmes. She actually was doing a movie. Mm. And she asked me to, to shoot it for her. And I was like, I don't fucking shoot movies. Right. I barely shoot music videos. Like, I'm pretending to do all of this. I just happen to be accidentally <laughs> dope at everything. So I'm like, it's, I'm under, I got so much performance anxiety because I'm bullshitting you as I'm taking your money and doing this. Right. And mysteriously, it's going to come out better than anything you ever said. But that's still, I'm unsettled. Doing right. It. So she's like, come shoot the movie. I'm like, I don't fucking shoot movies. Yeah. I didn't go. They get half the movie shot. She invites me to the premiere. I go to the premiere. And I'm looking at the movie like, yo, she did this shit? I'm like, damn, I got to get in this shit. I'll do whatever you need me to do. Right. So she takes me around the party and she introduces me to all of these movie people as a writer. Mm. I think I thought, I think she meant music. Mm. But they thought she meant movies. Film, right. So as we hobnobbing and stuff, they start asking me, so what have you written? And stuff like that. I'm like, I don't written. Yeah. And, oh, they, okay, let's go with it. <laughs> I, I got ideas. I remember Dave Chappelle and then was saying, yeah, I've I, I keep him all night at the party saying, right. yeah, well, there's a midget. <laughs> Walks in a bar. You like that? <laughs> right? So I get to bullshitting. I'm like, no, nah, we just had a crazy idea the other day. I'm exchanging information and shit. And I'm such an electrifying, you know, gentleman. <laughs> yeah, you know, people love me and shit. So the next day, I'm getting all these texts like, yo, you said you're going to send me something? Send me something. Here's my email. I'm like, they fucking want something. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm also OCD. So, like, it has to happen now. It can't yeah. happen two, three days. I'm like, okay. Right. Let's roll up. Let's see what you got. Yeah. I Googled. They said, somebody said, send me a one sheet. Mm. So I was like, the fuck is that? Right. right. So I Googled, what's a one sheet? I said, no problem. Rolled up. Said, <laughs> I sent it out, but I sent it to my homegirl first, who introduced me as the writer. Right. And she called me right back. She was like, who wrote that? I was like, me. She's like, no, you didn't. Yeah. Fuck you talking about? Yeah, she, I've never heard you write like that or do anything like that. I said, "Wow." Okay, so I guess it's good then. She said, "I'm sending it out," so I sent it out, and everybody jumped on my bumper. And I was like, "It was that good?" Yeah. I'm like, all right, I guess I all right. So I wrote a gang of one sheets, but that still really wasn't. No one had time to read the one sheet. Mm -hmm, Only mm -hmm. people that weren't, you know, doing anything. Yeah. Right. So I remember I'm sitting with my boy, um, Lorenz Dobson, 1500 or nothing. You know, yeah. Lorenz, right? Mm -hmm. I'm at the academy, and we with JoJo. He was a showrunner. He did uh, for the Love of Ray J, a couple other, okay. couple other things. And I'm sitting with him, and I'm like, it's my chance. Because he had liked one of my other ideas. He's laughing and shit. I'm like, that was fake, bro. That I, That's bullshit. Right. right. Like, Tell me more. I'm like, yeah. it's a fucking joke. <laughs> I'm like, you're listening. So, hey, you know, I get ready to pitch, and he fucking 
Mm-hmm. Turned his head and wasn't even listening no more. So I'm, yeah. I'm like, God damn. I said, well, I'm thinking I'll probably have to, you know, get my John Singleton on and just shoot it myself. Boom. He looked up at me. <laughs> That's what you do. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so all this time writing and all this time bullshitting, back to Issa Rae. Shut up and shoot. Like, right. Let's get it done. So I'm like, well, that's the only thing that got his attention is me saying I'm going to do it myself. So now I'm hell bent on doing it myself. Yeah. So I just need a crew, need a skeleton crew, and I'll make the rest happen. So everyone that I had met along those years of me preparing, I said, we're going to do a movie. We're going to do a movie. We're going to do a movie. Once I got the go-ahead from Slink, Cynthia, and Delay, I called them all up and said, we're doing a movie. Yeah. And they all jumped in. and Wow. You know, so we did it like that. But they 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 all thought we were like doing a movie that was going to take the YouTube or a movie that wasn't going to get accomplished or finished. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pandemic started. And they was like, one of my boys called me. He was like, bro, I didn't want to say nothing because I know how you are. And I know you're going to get it done. But every time I talk to you, I was like, how the fuck is this fool get shit done? <laughs> right, right. He's like, I wasn't gonna say nothing, but like, it was the pandemic. Fools, two right. years later, like, fools was dying and shit, and you just was still working. I was yeah. like, I was like, yeah, it's done. So, shout out to that. Oh, and I brought something. I didn't is know that my for man. Me? I hope you can. Ooh. It's a dirty cup to LAT, so you can you can represent for the best. I should have put this ever. on way before. No, but. because I wanted to give it to you. Okay, so yeah. next time you're talking to someone else about- I'll wear it. You'll wear it. And then they'll say, what is this? And then you'll say, oh, this is from my good friend, Joey. Aww. <laughs> yeah, All right. I'll say exactly what you told me to say. <laughs> Thank you, Joey. You're welcome. So, Joey, where, where, where's my shirt? I didn't know you were going to be here because, like, he asked me before I got here. He said, so have you seen any of the clips? I'm like, truthfully, a couple of clips, but- Moving, I'm like, I'm moving, yeah. yeah. I committed yeah. to it from what my homegirl Jackie, Jackie right? Yeah. yeah, don't even remember which person connected. Oh, good. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah I'm like, but I committed to it through text and I'm OCD, so I have to do everything that I commit to, right? It's gonna bother me to my yeah, because I kept confirming, I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure you coming? To- you got me. I'm like, okay, he said that, so I'm like, all right, cool, we got him. <laughs> my boy kept my boy on meet after this. He was like, "Bro, are you sure you coming?" I said, "Bro, I've already told her I'm coming." So yeah, you already know how that goes. So yeah, yeah. are right, you coming? Yeah, like, he knows if I say I'm coming. Right, I'm. I got to be there. So yeah. So look, what 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 did you learn? Because this was this your first time. Was this, this your first my film? first solo attempt? Like, okay, I've shot movies. Shout out to my man Gatsby Randolph. He was on the Queen's Court with Tamar and all of them. Okay. Um. We shot, we were up for, our, we were nominated, well, considered for Oscar 2019 Best Documentary for Who is Gatsby Randolph. Okay. And um, what was the question? Oh, is it my first? So I shot that with him, another project called Project Hollywood. And then this will be my, that Dirty Cops will be my first solo attempt of like me doing it. Like without right, that right, team, right. without that team, and just yeah. directing and everything myself. So what, what, what did you learn from like your whole experience of, of shooting the film? What did I learn? Yeah. Were you scared? Not really, Maybe. because I'm like accidentally dope at everything I do. So <laughs> I love, okay, I love your confidence, and that's what makes you so successful in things that oh, you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you need to give that to me. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. But yeah, so I'm like, I don't really like doubt myself because it's like, yeah. I like to say, I'm like, Trinity. I don't know why I always say Trinity because she's the woman. I could easily say Neo. Mm. Right. But Trinity is the one that says I need to learn how to ride a Ducati. Hook me up. Mm. She rides All a Ducati. Right. So I'm like a visual learner. All I really got to do is see something once and then yeah. I can repeat it. So with the movies, I've been watching movies forever. Like I know angles because of I'm I have a photographic memory. Like I see the angle and that's just how it's supposed to look. I can right. shoot a movie just because I know how it's supposed to look. Right. And once my crew taught me what those angles like are called the aspects, and yeah. everything like that. Like, I couldn't even communicate with the crew. It was like, you ever seen the new the Dolomite? Terminology. Have you ever yeah. seen the new Dolomite? No. no. You haven't seen the new I Dolomite? I have not. Man, y'all got to go see that. That's Eddie Murphy's Dolomite. I'm going to see it. He redid it. That was okay, important the new Dolomite. to me finishing this movie, too. Mm. So, in this movie, Dolomite is kind of like me. He just said he wants to do a movie. Yeah. And he just, he got a crew from the school and he had all his homeboys and they was fucking up at first. And the, the crew... Showed him what he was doing. Like, you got mm-hmm. it. You got the vision. You got what you want to do. You just have no idea what you're doing. Right. So he had this, uh, he had a DP that showed him through it. So luckily, one of my DPs saw that movie. Mm. So he came the next day and he was like, have you guys ever seen Dolomite? I was like, yes, exactly. <laughs> and he was like, I didn't want to say anything yesterday because it was my first day on set, but I totally get what you guys are doing. Yeah. So I'm down. 
So I couldn't even communicate with the set. I'm like, bro, man, hook it up like this, bro. I want to see the shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got a clip on my Instagram where people comment under, like, is that how you direct? I'm like, bro, we going to, so you going to get your GURB and you say your GURB we gonna, and we put it to the young, you follow them, ah, uh, uh, and then boom, we in it, right? And they all go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, sure. But after a couple of months of that, they all know exactly what I mean. He'll, the, yeah. My DP will go like this. Got it. He wants you to stand over there and hear it. Is this right, Joy? You got to show him. Hear it. Boom. That's right. So, <laughs> But they taught me a lot and taught me how to communicate with him because I didn't even know what to talk, how to say what I want. I just knew what it was supposed to look like. Right. And I wasn't, I should have reshot 30 Cops. I had to reshoot it because the first 10-minute pilot was like, my first time just like getting it done without any guidance. Right. And so I said, and my boy, shout out to my man Mello, my one of our producers, Mello, he comes over and he's watching it and he's like, this is good. Like, don't get me wrong, it's good, but where are all your like A shots and dynamic shots mm. and shit like that? And I'm like, well, I didn't shoot it. Mm -hmm. He knows how I shoot. I'm like, well, I didn't shoot it with my own hands. Like, right. I have somebody. And then it dawned on me, I was like, I didn't really tell him what to do because mm. you don't have to tell me what to do. Right. I'm dope. That's you're just, you just cool like that. <laughs> So, um, and he was like, you, you got to do better. And I was like, all right, for sure. So I showed up to set. I scheduled a reshoot. So I'm going to mm -hmm. shoot this whole shit over. Scheduled a reshoot. And I showed up to set early. Like, you motherfuckers ain't going to catch me off guard today. Yeah. I'm up here smoking my weed. The sound guy gets there early. He comes over and he's like, bro, you know you dope. He said, but you got to do more directing. Like, he said, you're, you're starring in the shit and you like, you never stop producing. I'm answering my phone and mm -hmm. getting people to say, yeah. you never stop producing. But- if you could direct this guy to do what you want him to do, then I think you'll be more satisfied. Mm. I was like, that's exactly why I'm here mm. for today. That's why we're shooting. He was like, trust me, he's cool, but like, what you want is not what he's doing, and you're not necessarily telling him what to do. You're giving him too much free range. Right. I was like, for sure, for sure. He, then we set up the shot, and the DP gets there, and he set up the shot. And I'm looking like, that ain't what I was going to do, mm. but fuck it. Let's do it. And he shot it. And I normally never say, let me see the playback. Yeah. This is me reshooting. So I'm like, let me see the playback. Now this is you directing. Yeah. yeah. Said, let me see the playback. And I looked. I said, Man, what the f Hey, bro, break that shit down. Put the dolly over here. Uh, set all that shit up over here. I'm about to bring the car in like I said I was going to. I'm directing. Yep. Mm. Here you go. Yeah. I'm going to bring the car in like I said I was going to do. We're going to back it up here. You come in from here, steady cam. And the sound guy was back there like. I was like, uh -oh. oh, Okay. Now you're not unwelcome the beast. Yeah. Now I know exactly what I'm doing. Now I know exactly how it has to be done right. or, or I'm going to be wasting my money. So from then on, it was, yeah. I had to just do it all. Let's like, man, let's, let's get it. No, right, turn the screen to me. Here, dark skin guy, come stand right here. <laughs> get over. Ah, you got me looking Bernie Mac black. Brighten me up. <laughs> Brighten me up. All right, cool. I'll pull it down and post. I had to figure out who post was. I thought post was like some magical place that the movie goes to after. <laughs> For real. Because they kept telling me, We'll fix it we'll in post. We'll fix it in post. Yeah. And I, when I figured out who that post that was me, hilarious. I was like, hold on, hold on. I'm the guy. I'm the guy that's going to fix this in post. One of the scenes in Dirty Cops, I had to take from Pitch Black. It was the best take. I have this high production value uh, alternative yeah. scene I could use. Right. Like it's right. the high production scene is okay. lit properly okay. and everything. Because yeah. it was a... Um, it was a a continuous shot. Okay. So we wasn't, okay. the lighting wasn't prepped for right, them to right, do that, but they right. fucking performed. Wow. It was pitch black in the car. Oh. And I'm like, and we didn't even stop them. And we're like, oh shit, we weren't exposed for it or nothing. So then we reset the shot, picked it up from there. So I'm at home and I'm like, this dialogue is shit and the, the money dialogue is in a pitch black shot. Mm. Right. So I'm Googling how to, how to fix a a, a dark shot. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I've learned so many different techniques on how to fix this shot and I just let let it go. A year later, I'm still thinking I'm going to pay somebody to help me with the edit or help yeah. me with the coloring. But then my man Callie's sitting down with me. He's looking at some of the scenes and he's like, bro, they're going to charge the fuck out of you. Look at the, you on the rooftop, this shit blown out. Scratch this scene. I said, you can't scratch the fucking <laughs> rooftop scene. He said, well, it's blown out. They're going to charge you for this. I said, don't worry about it. I'll do it myself. Mm. Trinity. How do you color? But I had already been teaching myself, so I just didn't understand the language. Right, right. So a year later, when I'm sitting back down, I went to some of my trials. Mm. Oh, that color looked pretty good. And it still wasn't clicking. So I called one of my color correct buddies, and I'm like, bro, 
the shit don't look like a movie, bro. Yeah. The colors look cool and everything, but the shit don't look like a movie. He right. said, that's because you don't understand the vector scope. So I was like, what the fuck is that, bro? Like, every time I turn around, I got some more terminology I got to go teach myself. <laughs> and he's like, vector scopes. He said, if you don't understand that, bro, then you, you're not going to get... I said, vector scopes. I remember seeing that one in um, tutorials. So mm-hmm. I said, fuck all the rest of the tutorials. I'm about to go to <clears throat> teach myself vector scopes. Yeah. Once he touched me, once I did that, Fucking light came on. I said, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Now it's literally like watching the ones and zeros on the matrix. Mm. Mm. To you, it looks like ones and zeros, but I see a blonde, I see, I see right, a car, right, I see a Corvette. Right. That's how I go. Mm. Uh, so once I did that, I was like, oh, I'm gigging. So I took everything I had learned from the videos and I said, I'm going to fix this scene because the, the dialogue on here is the one that I have to use. Yeah. And I, I took that shit from pitch black to uh, it being there. So I'm a pretty good color corrector. And so, like I said, I'm accidentally dope. So. Wow. I color corrected the whole movie. I didn't get a chance to do a grade because I wasn't too sure of what that was. And like I said, I put a 90-day deadline on the movie coming out because I didn't know if the world was ever going to open back up. Right. They kept None shutting it down and I couldn't yeah. get my premiere. I couldn't do anything else. I said, the movie has to come out before I lose the buzz. Right. And everything like that. So I put the deadline on it, got it out there, got distribution. Now it's on the platforms. And now we're on the series in part two. That's wow! Wow! That's up, man. Congratulations! Yes. Appreciate, you, man. Appreciate you. That's dope. Man. So, what do you like better, music or film? Uh, do you ever miss it? It's kind of like Fifty Cent. Like I had to do music to be able to do what I do. I did a lot of songs on the 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 score for my West Name. It kind of like yeah. goes hand in hand because yeah. I can hear where the music needs to go, mm-hmm. hear what type of vibe it is, and everything like that. I don't really um, enjoy or miss like performing or anything like that, or mm-hmm. even studios for that matter. But I still like writing. I wrote some bars on the way here. I, I still write, but yeah. I don't miss music. But yeah. I do buy buy I do by chance happen to run a record label with a couple of viral artists. My nice. son is uh Heem Beasy. Um he just released his project last week. Shout out to him. Wow. Really volume one. And then I don't know if you guys are big TikTokers. You guys ever be on TikTok? A little bit. Not really. Oh uh, well, my other artist, I'm shout too out old. to just kidding. No, never. <laughs> Another uh, my other artist, uh, Lil Vader. Shout out to him. He's got that viral song "Wop It" and mm-hmm. "Rack City" and "Up." Okay, and all of that on TikTok. Oh, Rack City. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's Donnie Solo, my man. Dope. Those nice. are my other artists. Shout out to them. Shout out wow. To my Ocho. Okay. Now and forever. So, Music. what's the name of your label? Now and forever. Now and forever. Music nice. Because we have now and then forever. So. I love it. I love it. Oh, you you have your hands in everything. You're busy, trying. busy I'm, body. I'm trying. I'm trying to keep really this good. Face young. Yeah. And do it while I can. Indeed. So I can chill. Indeed. And yeah. relax. Well, Joey, man, it has been a pleasure, man, having you here. Wait, um, wait. I had one more question. Yes. What advice do you have for up, uh, upcoming filmmakers that are, you know, just learning to do it, kind of in the same position that you were in, you know, just trying to, just, you know, just trying to make a movie? The same thing that Issa Rae told me, mm. or I seen. And that was like the truest thing she could have said. Reach across... Fuck everybody else. Don't stop chasing people at elsewhere. Like, well, if I can just get him in the movie or right. if I can get him right, to talk right. to me, fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them. Whatever you're going to do, there's a there's people right around you that are willing to do it because you're going to be doing something that they haven't even thought about doing right. or wish they could do. And if you can facilitate that, that moment for them, they're going to be all in. If you build it, they will come. So you have to shut up and shoot. Stop saying, I didn't even have a script. Mm. So the fact that people say, well, the script has to be right. And right no, right. it doesn't. It has to be right in whose mind? Mm-hmm. Someone buying it from you? Someone yeah. investing in you? Right. Maybe. But if you're going to do it yourself, then I wasn't answering to anyone. I just, I knew I had what it took. So I just did it. Now, if I had an investor that would say, well, I want to see the script and we're not going to go until I've seen the plans and all the other shit. I didn't let that slow me down. I was like, right. nah, right. fuck all of that. We're going to shoot. I know what I got. I had a barbershop. My brother-in-law owned a barbershop. Um. Homeboys own barbershops. We my, my buddy was running like a Airbnb type of thing. So we had all types of other locations and shit. I know the whole city, so I can get pretty much what I need to get done. I'm right. not gonna let some investor like slow me up. My cousin is a sheriff. I can get the police block a block off. Right, of right. Me. So got your connection. That. So just shut up and shoot and get it done. All of that other stuff would just have you just holding your script for the next three, five years. Right, right. Indeed. Wow. Indeed. Oh, thank you, Joey. I am Joey you, in the building. Um, if the people want to reach you, uh, where can they find you? Uh, on Instagram mainly, unless you're a big Facebooker, but then that would again dictate my age. <laughs> you know? So, but um, Instagram mainly um, underscore I am Joey the director or at Dirty Cops LA. 
Okay. That's where you can catch me. All Any time. projects mm-hmm. that you want to share that you're working on currently or Dirty Cops LA, the series is going to come at you fast. I refuse to put another deadline on it because that's how I almost died. <laughs> right. right. So we I don't want put, you to die. I won't put a deadline <laughs> on Stay it. Alive, but it's on, alive. it's on its way. Dirty Cops LA 2 is on its way. Nope. Mr. Gerald is a sitcom that I'm working on with Sling Johnson. That's on its way. And then lots of music because, uh, like I said, the record label is doing its thing. So lots of music and lots of. Uh, Dirty Cops LA. So I move off wow. of that franchise. Until I'm off of that brand, that's what it is. You better keep us in the loop because we want to be supportive of that's, what you're doing too. I so. wish I was at y'all thing the other night. Jackie said she invited you. Jackie may have. <laughs> <laughs> she said, no, bullshit. Oh. She may have. But yeah, she's like, no, I she, invited him. She may have. <laughs> she may have. But I'll be, man, I'll be trying to commit. Yeah. And and, and I, hey, my, my homeboy be like, bro, why do you say yes and you have no ideas no idea what the details are. Right. I'm like, bro, you need a yes from me. Yeah. I will find out the details. I'm I can't slow down for the details. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, you got the yes. Find out like today. Right. I said, yo, where am I coming? Yeah. And what time? That's right. all I need to do. I already committed to it. So right. she said that wasn't committed to. Right. That wasn't right. <laughs> that wasn't acknowledged. So the podcast was committed to. Right, right. Well, we have more events coming up. You know, we're trying to shoot for something in the summer. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, we might do something posted. in the summer. Yeah, let so, me know. Yeah. I'm working on a small, like um a semi short oh, uh, for my artist. That would be perfect to like perfect. Yeah, definitely. I'll get a screening or a premiere for it. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Look I'll let you know that. the details. For sure. After. All right. Well, guys, it has been fun. It has been exciting. Um, yes. I Am Joey is an incredible storyteller. Make sure that you guys go to Amazon or Tubi. Um, go take a look at Dirty Cops LA uh, Part 1. Check him out. Follow him on Instagram. And, uh, yeah, man, this, this, this guy is working hard for y'all, man, putting out mm-hmm. incredible yeah. product, incredible content. Man, you, you guys got to go support it. Yep. All right, it, so this is the Beyond Take Two podcast brought to you by Beyond Hollywood International Film Festival. This is episode 15? 15. 15. 15 man. Yeah, I remember when Jackie said y'all just started. Yep. Yeah, episode yeah, 15. Man. We're yeah. still going. Still going <laughs> every week, man, every week. So yeah. um, thanks again to uh, I Am Joey for coming through. Appreciate and, you on um, you. I'm your host, Madge. And I'm your host, Veronica. And we will see you guys next week. All right. Yes. There it is. Beyond Take Two, take a walk beyond Hollywood. Beyond the lights, camera action is the hard work and passion. Beyond Take Two, take a walk beyond Hollywood. Beyond the lights, camera action is the hard work.